everyone. Welcome to the Weave in the Trenches webinar. I'm really excited to have Mary Kromians here. Uh, Mary has a lot of experience in the salon industry. She's been doing this for, she said, over 25 years, which she looks like 25. So that's, uh, that's saying that. something. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we're today. The goal of this webinar is to to break down everything that's happening prior to the first appointment. Uh, give as much good detail as we can about how to acquire new customers and really build the business, build trust with those customers up until the first appointment. Um, Mary, again, thanks for your time. Uh, let's. Is there anything you want to tell about your salons? You have you have three, which is really awesome. Yeah, uh, my husband, Robert Cromines, and I, we have three salons. There's two in San Diego, California. We have one in Oklahoma City. Uh, we've both been in the beauty industry for a really long time, We're, but really always open to new technology and finding ways to do things better uh, and stay, you know, stay up with the time, stay up with like social media and things like that. And we were really thrilled when we found out about Weave technology. That was like, oh my gosh, seems was so amazing. So we jumped on right away with that and we're always looking to find a way to yeah do things new and different but also better and you know always finding a way to get to the the end result and have better success with it so yeah we're excited we're looking forward to chat i'm looking forward to chatting with you today and i love everything that we brings to us so that's awesome and you know the, the success that you're having is is definitely a, a testament to how, how forward thinking you are and how um much you're both trying to implement the, uh, the newest and most cutting edge technology. So, um, well, let, let's jump right in. Um, first things first, you know, new customer acquisition. Um, what's working for your salons? Uh, if you had to get, give your top three customer acquisition uh, avenues, what would those be? Well, for us, it is still always it has been this and I feel like it's going to always be this word of mouth for us is top so every single guest that sits in our chair we always especially you know especially if you love doing that guest hair now if you don't have a great guest experience maybe don't follow up with this but when you enjoy working with a guest we encourage our team and I do it still even though I've been in the in this hair salon for over 23 years I still tell my guests I I'm constantly building my clientele. I'm always looking for new guests. I love doing your hair. I'd love if you'd send me friends just like you. So word of mouth always helps. Uh, I, we've been really getting heavy with reminding our team, especially being shut down twice, um, reminding everybody that we're starting over. You have to ask for those Yelp reviews. So asking, we get a lot of inquiries from Yelp. We do get a lot of people emailing on Yelp still. Uh, it, it surprises me actually that so many people reach out. We're getting more new requests than ever coming back in after being shut down twice. And I'm sure it's a combination of many things, but we're getting a lot of new requests because when I ask the guest, how have you come to the salon? And they say, oh, I found you on Yelp. I'll always come, come back and ask them, well, what made you decide to choose us because of Yelp? And we do, luckily we have a nice like 4.5 star rating, 4.9 star rating, which is really great. But they said, you know, all of your reviews have been, they're really current and, and they're very informative. So when I'm asking a guest to leave a review, I tell the guest, you know, I'd love it. You know, you're telling me how much you loved your time with me today, Adam. I would really appreciate it. The best thing you could do for me is to write me a review of not only about me, but about your experience in the salon today. And, you know, guests love hairdressers. They, they want to support their hairdresser and they're more than happy to help. And, you know, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It just takes a couple minutes. It's really it's the easiest thing to do. It's almost like giving away a smile. So the guests are really more than happy to do that. And then of course we reach out via social media. So we do have a social media company that takes care of our salon social media, but we encourage our team to work on their social media. And actually, you know, when you're scrolling and you're looking through things on social media, you see somebody that's got in San Diego for us that has, if you're following the hashtag San Diego Mark, making sure to, you know, reach out to that person, send them a DM and say, Hey, Adam, you have a, looks like you have a really cool vibe. I don't know if you have a hairdresser that you like, but I'd love to do your hair. Here's where I work. Call the salon or DM me. So those would be my three ways. That's awesome. I, I really like a couple of things that you, you mentioned. I just wanted to pick out and just say how awesome they were. First of all, you're getting really specific with people. Um, you know, a lot of times 
we as small business owners we do a good job and we're just hope that we get a review or hope that we get a referral but you're specifically asking and you're also telling them the type of people that you want to them to send in right you're saying friends and family that are like you and so you're, you're giving them some some ideas of people that they can send in and then secondly you're getting specific about what type of review you want them to leave and how why how people are finding you the fact that you're kind of starting over you know that's that's really important as far as you know doing things over and over every day you know if you ask for reviews every single day yeah. it can just kind of seem like oh people understand right like i say well you leave a review and they understand what they should do but they don't right nope. they're they're not small business owners maybe they are but a lot of them aren't and they don't know what we're looking for exactly and you're telling them exactly that so that's yeah. that's awesome and then the the hashtag idea that's that's amazing you know following a hashtag of your city and then reaching out to people yeah that's that's genius and it's it's free right yeah. it's it takes it's time yes it's, but yep but even that's, doing that when you're searching and you're seeing people that aesthetically you like maybe you like their hair or it's the type of hair that maybe you're not good at that type of hair and you want to be good at that type of hair you're still selecting the type of guests that you want. So you're really becoming more in control of your books and who sits in your chair. So that I would imagine, I know for me, it makes me a happier hairdresser doing the type of hair that I love. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Okay. The, I, I kind of have an idea of what, what the answer to this is just based mm -hmm. off of your previous answers. But as far as like brand image goes, you know, just portraying yourself online and in your reviews, what what is the brand image that you try to portray to your customers and potential customers? Well, for me personally, um, you see my bright pink hair. So I do love to do hair color. So when I'm portraying my brand through Instagram, I just I show a lot of color. I show a lot of color techniques. I show a lot of before and afters because I like to do the makeover. Uh, I do try to show real time as much as I do show working with models. I ha tend to have more followers that are hairdressers than local. So for me, my efforts have been right now trying to target more locally. So I do try to make sure that I have my guests and I do also like to show their face. So I know like on Instagram, a lot like the, you know, the picture is great because there's a lot of hair in it when you do the back of the head and I do still do those, but I do try to show the person's face because I let, you can tell when someone's happy with their eyes, you know, now everyone's in a mask so you can't see their smile, but you can see the happiness through their eyes. And I think that is, more telling and more selling, you know, that shows them, shows the people that I'm trying to market to what I'm looking for. So my brand tends to be more colorful, I guess, even though I wear all black, but the hair stuff tends to be a lot more colorful. And then on our salon pages, we try to be a little bit more broad and target to everybody because we want to be very inclusive. We have price ranges that are formed by five elements. So they fit everybody's budget. We do all different hair types, different hair textures, different lengths. We do all genders, all ethnicities. So we really try to be all inclusive on our, on our salon pages so that every, anybody that looks at the page can see themselves in there. That's awesome. I, I like that you kind of separated the two, you know, as a stylist, you mentioned earlier, you kind of pick and choose the people that you want to reach out to on social media. Cause you know, the types of people that you want to have in your chair. And you're also portraying that on your personal page. Uh, as far as the types of, of hairstyles that you like to do. So being consistent and telling a story, that's super valuable. And it seems like you do a really, really exceptional job at that, so. Thank you, still learning. Every day is a learning curve with social media. Yeah, definitely. There's always a new platform, right? So, yes. That's awesome. Um, so you've, you've got people that will find your, your salon, call in, request an appointment, here, here's the thing with with COVID, a lot of things are changing on a daily basis, right? Sometimes salons are open, sometimes they're not allowed to be open. Sometimes it changes with every business. You've maybe seen an increase in this. I know we've seen it kind of in general across small businesses um, that people are calling and scheduling and just trying to find someone that's open and see who can get them in first. And so we're getting a lot of like broken appointments between the first call and the actual uh, appointment. Have you oh. seen any of that in, in your salon? 
Not necessarily in our salon per se, I, but I can understand how and why that's happening. Where I'm seeing, our, we do have, we're pretty much, the one salon I'm working in is a high reputation salon. So a lot of our guests are great coverage guests. They're the guests that's coming in every four weeks to, you know, get that coverage or they're the highlight guests that's every eight weeks. So I feel like our loyal list, that's not happening. However, when we get, um, we also have a salon app and we do get people, we haven't been using our online booking right now just because through COVID, we we're not allowed to double book. And we also add in a, a 30 minute wellness and sanitation break after each guest. So right now we're not able to have people online book because it would kind of double over that. Sure. So, but what we can do is they're allowed to send us a request. So whether it's through our website or through the app, they send the request. Now, I will say we're getting sometimes 20 and 25 requests a day. Not all of those requests turn into an actual reservation. So that's where we're seeing the drop off where they're like trying to find out who's available, who's open. And sure. then when we call them, either they don't call us back or they'll say, oh, I already went somewhere else. Okay. So in that regard, that's been where we've seen it, but not if we also, re, we also not reinstated. We have always had a 24 hour cancellation policy. However, we've always been really big softies and haven't really upheld that. And you know, you do get the repeat offenders, which is unfortunate. And now time being such a commodity and being so valuable with every hairdresser, we're not able to double book. We can't squeeze people in. We can't make up the difference by, you know, if somebody doesn't show up, getting somebody else in or whatever, because there's so many new protocols. For us, if you cancel before 20, um, after 24 hours, there's a 50% charge of your total service on the on the books. And if you don't show up at all, it's a 100% service charge. We also take people's credit cards and we hold the credit card on file securely to hold that reservation. And we everybody gets forms sent to them where there's a cancellation policy that's written out and they have to sign that before they can make confirm their reservation. So we explain, explain everything to them. On the other side of that, though, what we have done just to be in the favor of the guest as well, because we're not really trying to, I don't want people to cancel. Mm -hmm. Getting 50% of it, it's not that. I want my stylist to be working. They want to do hair. They're happiest when their hands are working. You know, they don't want to get paid for nothing. So right. we're just trying to alleviate, you know, people doing that last minute part where we don't get a chance to refill their books. But at the bottom of our cancellation policy, should their stylist cancel on them, with less than 24 hours notice, they will receive the same 50% discount. Okay, that's awesome. Who's that? That's uh, our one-year-old. She wandered downstairs and she's, yeah. Aww. She's I'm not apparently wants to come in, but my door's closed. You should let so. her, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> she's very, very distracting. Uh, um, awesome, uh, a couple of things there that, that I wanted to highlight. Um, you, you have all of those policies in place. You mentioned sometimes you uphold them, sometimes you don't. No, but we letting uphold people... them now. Oh, we uphold okay. them now after COVID. Right. I was gonna. I was going to say where where each appointment is taking longer and you can't double book. Each appointment time is more valuable, and communicating that to your clients is is huge. You know, I've I've even seen small businesses that have some of the same stipulations, requiring you know a a fifty percent down payment that will go towards the uh the appointment but keeping the card on file and charging it same idea yeah so. for the most part like 90 percent of the guests understand it there's a few that are like no i don't want to do that i've been coming here for 100 years and it's like unfortunately you know our time is valuable too and it shouldn't be a problem if you show up right you know yeah. so definitely i give my credit awesome. card over for everything though i mean right That's everything yeah it's a pretty pretty it's a generational thing right sometimes it's, yeah sometimes they're hesitant uh, for for me you know it's just commonplace so um as far as covid goes you mentioned a few things uh, what are some of the other communications that have changed as far as uh customers go uh with covid happening and and you're right in the thick of it right you've probably been closed down for uh multiple times closed and then reopened and then closed again and now yes. reopen uh, yes we're celebrating almost six weeks reopened <laughs> that's fantastic that's fantastic um what, what are some of those communications that have that have come by way of that uh that you're sending out to patients now so it's cute you call them patients they're guests oh, patients yes <laughs> i apologize I, know. I think it's funny because i think that we've sorry to go off track here 
But the fact that your company is called Weave just fits right in with hairdressers. And I know right. it leans more towards the dental and doctor practices more so than hair salons, but it is yeah. genius for hair salons beyond belief. And I'm not sure. I'm, I think that maybe you guys have gotten a few more hair salons on board because my husband is Definitely. a giant voice in the industry. And as soon as he started telling people about Weave and what we're doing with it, he just we started getting all these text messages messages what's weave what's weave you know right um, but we, we have, have had a big uptick there the, probably the reason i said patients i've i've done this in uh five industries so far and today i've done two other webinars with medical industries so i've been saying patients on those got webinars. It, got it i don't mind there yeah. are patients we take care of them um well we do send out via email it's more through our pos system because it gets held into the guest profile but we send out a wellness form that we got from Weave, uh, mm -hmm. the five questions. That was genius and wonderful. Uh, and it's so easy, too. I really like that about it. That was the main one. We, we hooked onto that right away. We added the cancellation awesome. policy, and then we also um, added a waiver of liability just to let okay. people know that you know, you're signing, that you know that you are choosing to come into our business during a pandemic when other people are also coming in. Should you get COVID, you're not going to put, put liability on us. Right. Awesome. Yeah, I, th I think those measures, uh, you know, th those are huge. And, and anyone who's not using uh, some sort of two way messaging system, this is a really great opportunity to implement something like that. Yes. Um, for, for me, anytime I'm frequenting a local business, I'm pretty much expecting to hear from them how things are going. You know, where do I show up? Do I text when I get there? Is there a limit of the number of people that I that yes. can be in there? Um, and so I'm I'm expecting that if I don't get that, I'm kind of like, what are they doing? Are, do they? Protection? Yeah, right. Do, do they have precautions in place? And yeah. so if you're not using it, now's a really great time to start using it because people are kind of expecting that. Yeah. So. And then the curbside waiting, um, that dialogue was great. We got that dialogue from Bailey on one of the interviews we did with her. And we're like, oh, that's perfect. Curbside waiting room. Because we knew we were going to do it. We took the waiting mm -hmm. room out. But we didn't know. We weren't calling it curbside waiting yet. And so, of course, we tell our guests, you know, just you're going to text us at our phone number directly here, which is through Weave. And text us when you arrive. We expect you to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. We'll let you know when you can come in. So being able to do that and kind of not have to jump on the phone to do it is so much easier because you can multitask you know you can be on the phone answering a phone the phone of somebody who is calling in to make a reservation while still texting with somebody that you know okay yes welcome to come in you know and they all know ahead of time you know wait for us at the front door we're going to take your temperature when you arrive like we you know you're going to sanitize your hands so but weave has been great it set us free because you can really communicate with people so much quicker and the guests like that too because they like to multitask and when they're you know every people are in meetings multitasking and sending text messages when they're not supposed right. to but they're yeah. not going to pick up the phone in the middle of a meeting they're not going to answer the phone and say hello but right it's just been great with weave and i love that it's so seamless and that weave is our phone system i don't have three different phone systems plus weave you know i have weave weave takes care of everything that's right. awesome that's re really awesome uh Mary, you have given us some, some really awesome information so far. Thank it, you. It, if you haven't taken something away that you can use to, to help grow your salon, rewatch because there's definitely something in there. Um, one last question that I love to, to ask people. Okay. 25 years. That, you know, that's how long you've been in it. If you could take all of that experience and go to someone starting out their first day and give them some advice to expedite their career and really help them in their career trajectory, what would that advice be? I think I would say, say yes to every opportunity put in front of you, but also don't be afraid to go out and find your own opportunities and create your own, manifest your own destiny, find what you want. If there's somebody that you see that you want to work with, you reach out to them and ask them how you can work, work with them. You volunteer, you say yes to everything, show up and have your, your attitude is really so important. Like having a great attitude and being available and more than being able is so, so important because hairdressers with experience can teach you how to do good hair, but you sometimes can't teach people how to have a great attitude or how to be available, you know? So say yeah. yes to everything, 
soak it all in and, you know, enjoy the ride. That's awesome. It's, it seems like you've really done that and, and are, are a pinnacle of that in, in your <laughs> career. So Mary, again, I appreciate your time. Super valuable information that people can take and go implement in their salon or in their, you know, if they're just run, running their own chair out of their house, yes. things that they can do to, to really help grow their, their client base. Um, any last words, anything else that you want, want people to know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> about anything? Shameless about, plugs? Is that what I should do? It, yeah. Any, any, about yourself, about anything that we just talked about. Well, I think the beauty industry is still alive and thriving. I know that people may get discouraged or have been discouraged during this time that we've all gone through. But with all obstacles, you got to find a way to either get through it, get over it, or get around it. And we're going to come out on the other side. And people always want to have a need to get their hair done. So don't give up on yourself or the industry. This place is its the best place to be. I'm grateful for Paul Mitchell um, working for such a great company. And with such great education, it's afforded me like to get to know so many other people and just the connections, like I getting to be a part of Weave, like, you know, just, you never know what can come from it. So don't be discouraged, keep on going. And there's still so much, so much left for us all to do. Well, we, we appreciate you being part of Weave and, and everything that you're doing to, to help the, the beauty industry. Thank so. you so much. I appreciate you including me on this. It's such an honor. Definitely, definitely. So we're going to have more episodes of these in the trenches webinars. We're going to be interviewing salon owners and getting as much information as we can to help the beauty industry. So stay tuned. And Mary, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate you. Take care. <laughs>